Good afternoon, Carmel High School. This is Ty Bryan alongside Ayanna Newhouse. Today's show will feature Childish Gambino's new song, The Paleo Diet, and the NBA Playoffs. Carmel High School, this is CHTV. In local news, the 39-year-old Geraldine Jones has pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter on Friday in the murder of the 23-year-old Samantha Fleming. She also pleaded guilty to criminal confinement for holding Fleming's three-month-old child against her will. Prosecutors said Jones drove to Fleming's house on April 6, 2015, pretending to be a state child services worker. She allegedly told Fleming she was there to drive her and her daughter to a court hearing in Gary. <clears throat> Fleming's body was found in Jones' home on April 17, 2015, with 10 stab wounds and her body dosed in bleach and placed in a plastic bin in a closet. Jones had previously told her family and neighbors that she was pregnant with twins and tried to pass Fleming's child as her own. Jones will be sentenced on May 25th to 30 years in prison and 10 years of probation. In local news, Carmel <laughs> resident Michelle Qureshi is making her mark in New World of Music. Koreshi's seventh weight is one of the five nominated and award in Best Contemporary Instrumental Albums for the 14th Annual ZMR Music Awards. Zone Music Reporter is recognized as the industry source for new age, world ambient, electric, and instrumental music news. The winners will be announced May 12th at the Gala Award concert in New Orleans. Her 2016 album, Scattering Stars, won a Best Ambient Album Award from One World Music Radio in 2017. What is great about social media is you can find people all over the world who are looking forward to what you have released, Koreshi says. Koreshi performs at Carmel Gallery Walks, out-of-state concerts, and home concerts. She often performs at Hopwood Cellars in Zionsville. Koreshi and her husband, Anwar, have a daughter, Layla, a Carmel High School sophomore. Koreshi's albums are available on Amazon.com, and you can also visit MichelleKoreshi.com for more. Now over to Daniel with more news updates. Thank you, Ayana. Recently, many people have been trying all different types of diets. From veganism to gluten-free, diets are becoming an everyday lifestyle. The paleo diet is one that is prominent in, in, our, in Carmel. Our very own Ayana Newhouse and Kami B.T. take a closer look into the paleo diet. I'm Ayana Newhouse with your CHTV Entertainment Update. Recently, Indianapolis has opened their first paleo diet restaurant. In light of this new restaurant opening, we're going around Carmel and asking community members how they feel about the paleo diet lifestyle. Do you know what the paleo diet is? No, I don't. No idea. I do not. Something to do with vegetarian? No. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> Basically, the paleo diet is something that people hundreds of years ago had access to. So plants, meats, nothing artificial, nothing cooked in like oven stoves, everything like cooked over the fire. So what do you think about that? It sounds really healthy. It's great. It's cool that uh, downtown offers a variety of food options for people of all different diets and lifestyles. I think that's very interesting, very ancient, very healthy for you. I don't really understand how they would cook the meat. Like, do they just use fire to cook it? Or, like, do they eat raw meat? No, they don't eat raw meat. They, like, cook over a fire. Honestly, I don't really believe in diets. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm vegan, and it's not really a diet for me. It's a lifestyle, but yeah. Would you ever consider living this lifestyle or trying out the restaurant? Well, I'm too lazy to do that stuff, but maybe. Yeah, I would try it, yeah. Before I go on the diet, I might have to go to the restaurant to see what it's about, but it's very considerable. Uh, no. I'm really, really addicted to carbs. I like a variety of food way too much to do that. But it is something that I consider, I have considered. Um, I think that the paleo diet that you mentioned is a great way to live that healthy lifestyle. So yes, I would consider that. That's all I have from the news desk. Now back to Ty. 
Indiana made last week's offseason pickups official on Monday, announcing the additions of five-star New Albany shooting guard Romeo Langford and St. Mary's graduate transfer forward Evan Finstner. In landing Langford, the state's Mr. Basketball honoree, IU now has one of the top recruiting classes in the country. Rivals ranks Indiana's 2018 class as the seventh best in the nation and the top overall in the Big Ten. 247 ranks IU's class as the ninth best in the nation and the second in the Big Ten behind number seven Maryland. Langford is joined by earlier signees Jerome Hunter, Robert Fennessy, and Demazi Anderson, and Jerry Forrester. Before stepping on campus this summer, Langford joins fellow signees Anderson and Finnessy to play for the Indiana All-Stars in June, giving the Hoosiers three future players in this event for the first time since 2012, and this the second time since 1989. That's all I have for you today. Now for Brett and Garrett with more national sports news. Thank you, Ty. This is Brett David and Garrett Drake with your CHTV Sports Update. In NHL news, the fan favorite and first-year team, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, are moving on to the Western Conference Finals after defeating the San Jose Sharks by a series score of 4-2. The Golden Knights goalie Marc-Andre Fleury has been on fire lately, especially in the series clincher against the Sharks. He had 28 saves and did not let in a single goal. And it's safe to say that the Knights have been the biggest surprise of the season. In baseball news, Los Angeles Angels first baseman Albert Pujols hit his 3,000th career hit. Pujols, at the age of 38, became only the 32nd player to reach this outstanding milestone, as well as only the second player from the Dominican Republic after Texas Ranger Adrian Beltre did so last season. Pujols also has over 600 home runs to go along with his hits, and this makes him only the fourth player in history to accomplish both of these, joining Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, and Alex Rodriguez. Another big sports headline was the Kentucky Derby, and it was an interesting one, considering a 136-year-old curse was finally broken. The horse Justify, who was the first three-year-old winner since Apollo in 1882, won the Derby. Justify was the favor going into the race, and for good reason. His trainer, Bob Baffert, added his fifth Derby, and his jockey, Mike Smith, added a second Derby to his legacy. This result was not a big surprise to anyone. Transitioning to the NBA playoffs, the Cleveland Cavaliers made easy disposal of the top-seeded Toronto Raptors in Game 4 to complete the sweep. The final score was 128-93, to and LeBron James had a 29-point game along with 11 assists. Remarkably, this is the eighth straight year that James has led his team to the Eastern Conference Finals, dating back to his days with the Miami Heat. He has also made the NBA Finals for seven consecutive seasons, and this year he will be looking for number eight. The Cavaliers await the winner of the series between the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers, in which the Celtics currently have a three games to one lead with Game 5 in Boston tomorrow night. Moving from the East to the Western Conference, there are two Game 5s being played tonight in which the home teams have a 3-1 lead and a chance to move on in front of their home fans. The Houston Rockets will host the Utah Jazz at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by the Golden State Warriors hosting the New Orleans Pelicans at 10.30. Both games can be found on television on TNT. And that is all that we have for you today from the Sports Desk. Now back over to Ayana. Last night at the 2018 Met Gala, an exciting twist left the crowd in awe when two chains got on one knee and proposed to Kesha Ward. The longtime couple have three kids together, Heaven, Harmony, and Halo, which made it only natural when Ward happily accepted the proposal. The two have often referred to each other as husband and wife, but not until last night did they officially tie the knot. We wish a happily ever after to the cheerful couple. Now to Cami Petit with more entertainment updates. Thank you, Ayana. This is Cami Petit for your CHTV entertainment update. This weekend has been a huge weekend for the multi-talented artist Donald Glover, otherwise known as Childish Gambino. The singer and actor released his new single, This Is America, accompanied with its detailed music video. The video has reached almost 30 million streams and viewers are now sharing their thoughts on the message that the video expresses. Throughout the visual, there were many thought-provoking scenes. Among them, the artist is seen shooting a man sitting in a chair and later a choir. Additionally, there is a scene where the artist is being chased by a crowd.
Many see the video as a representation of modern day America and the events that commonly occur in our country. Others view the video as a protest on the way some groups are treated by other groups in America. Although the interpretation of the video's meaning is being left up for debate, many agree that the video brings to light some of our issues in the nation. This video comes in the midst of his debut on Saturday Night Live as a host and a musical guest on the long-running comedy. The star is also set to be featured in the upcoming film, Solo, A Star Wars Story. This is all I have for you today, Carmel. Now back over to the host. Thank you, Cammy, for the entertainment update. Well, that wraps up our show for today. For more stories like this, visit our YouTube channel at CHTV Carmel Television and on Twitter at CHTV. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of your CHTV Afternoon Newscast. Have a wonderful day, Carmel.